Ew, what is that? Did I freak you out? Hey, crafty family. <laughs> Did you see my bug? Ew, gross. It's actually just a fake bug. But I probably freaked people out. Sorry. <laughs> Look, it's Halloween. I'm a little early. But who cares? I did a pocket letter that's Halloween, and it's got a lot of creepy stuff on it, including the bug that you just saw on your screen, which I'm sure freaked a lot of people out and made them go, ew. But it's fake. It's just like a rubber bug. It freaks me out. I don't like to touch it because th my most feared bug in the entire world is a roach. So for me to had to have taken that out of the package and glue it onto this, it took a lot of deep breathing and relaxation exercises for me to do that. It just, it, it feels like a real bug. It's got a weird, it's not plastic. It's like a squishy, oh, gross, freaking gross, gross. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's so disgusting. <laughs> I hope that the person that's getting this doesn't throw up when she sees it. Anyway, this is my Halloween early uh, pocket letter swap that I'm doing with somebody. We decided to do a Halloween theme and I added a whole bunch of creepy stuff along with a bunch of cute stuff. So it's kind of confusing because we've got like these cute little skeletons, this cute little monster guys, cute little bats. And then if you pay attention to the photos, I don't know, let me make sure that my camera's picking that up. If you look at that photo, it's really creepy. It's a vintage and then there's this one down here. Um, it's a vintage Halloween photo, and some of them are freaking creepy. Like, really creepy. So I added them on to kind of give some creep factor. So at first glance, it kind of looks cute aside from the nasty bug. And then you're looking at it going, ooh, those freaking pictures are creepy. And they are. Like, what were they thinking back then? Did they think that those were good Halloween costumes? Because if you ever look up, if you ever get the chance to look up vintage Halloween photos, uh, you are going to cringe when you see some of them. They are just like super freaking creepy. Creepy. But cool to use for a creepy Halloween pocket letter or any other creepy Halloween project. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd show this. I haven't put the goodies in the back of it yet. Um, I'm going to do that. And I need to glue this part down because I keep forgetting to do so. And the original glue that I used did not stick. So I'm going to do that while I'm on camera. Not that any of you care to see me do that. I'll fix the rest of it because apparently I didn't use a very good glue for plastic, which I wasn't thinking, but that's okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, so that's my creepy Halloween pocket letter. I'm sure you don't want to see that anymore, especially the bug. Um, and what I'm actually going to show you how to do is how to make these fantastic flowers. And this one has like a glimmer, like a gold shimmer to it. Isn't that a cool flower? And you're probably wondering, well, how did you make that? I'm so in awe, Stacy. However, did you make that? Well, actually, I made this, if you, you know, because I know you're so interested. <laughs> I made this from something that you have around your house, and most people just throw in the trash nowadays because you don't need it, really. Uh, and I don't, honestly don't even know why they still make them. Honestly, it's like a waste of paper, but considering I'm going to show you how to recycle it and I'm going to show you um, probably a few different projects over the next few months hopefully if I have time um, but this is just one and I've got like a glue string hanging on me there we go so that's one and what I made it out of is voila you guessed it an old phone book because uh, yeah we get these but what the hell do we need them for it's not like I mean, seriously, what do you need a phone book for? You can look online for anything you need. Do people really ever use these? I hear people all the time, like, saying, you know, I don't know why they're sending them to me. They just go in the trash. And it's kind of a waste of paper. It really is just a waste. And I don't like waste. So, yeah, we're going to make a flower. Isn't that wicked cool? So all you got to do to make a wicked cool flower is to go into your phone book 
and find, you know, depending on whether you want it to be like a yellowy color, you can use the yellow page section, or if you want, you know, a white based color. So what I did was I took a crap ton of pages out and I just basically ripped them. And I probably have tried to rip too many of them at once, which you do about three at a time. Usually rips, yeah, as I say that, and it doesn't rip. <laughs> You're going to rip these out. You're going to rip out a bunch of them so that you can make a bunch. And once you have them ripped out, now you do need, well, you don't need, but you, if you have um, the Tim Holtz tattered flower, that's what I made this with, that tattered flower dye or whatever. Um, I'm sure, you, I mean, you could use any flower dye, any, or you could sit and hand cut because you could cut through several sheets of this at once. So it's not really a big deal. You can cut any flower. There's several tutorials on how to... <gasps> Excuse me. Every time I have a video, I have the hiccups. Why? Don't get it. So anyway, any flower is going to work. So if you want to hand cut some petals, there are a thousand videos showing you how to hand cut some flower petal thingies like this. So just look one up. Or if you have a dye like I did, you can use the tattered flower dye. You can use any flower dye you want pretty much that has multiple layers of flowers. So for instance, let's see if I can get some of these. I had cut out a ton of the big flower, as you could see. It, I cut out a bunch of these. They're just in a big jumbled pile. But that's what's in this pile is, is, is just a ton of because you can cut them in like a matter of seconds because what, what I did was for the tattered Tim Holtz tattered flowers I would take like four or five sheets and fold it over like this and it fits over the die perfectly and gets all the flowers so then I'd have a ton of flowers cut out so I found that to be the easiest way um, once you have them cut out and of course I'm not very well prepared there's the small ones there's the smallest ones in that group. Here's the medium ones in that group of tattered flowers. And where'd my other ones go? There they are. And here's the, the other ones that are in there. So there's like four different flower types. I guess I don't need all of these out. So there's like four different flower types. One, two, three, four. That's what I used on this one. On this one, which I didn't even color yet, um, I, only, I, didn't, I omitted the big one. So I didn't use the big one. I just used the other three. And I made this one. So I'm going to show you real quick how to put this together. You can color them. You can leave them like this. I plan on doing a bunch that are just like this because I think they're fabulous just the way they are. Or you can color them and kind of tatter them and make them look like this very easily and you can use your color sprays which is cool so it gives it kind of a shabby chic look so what you're gonna do is to get this kind of look and I'll show you exactly what I did for this one here okay what I did for this one is I took about three pieces of each flower okay and what I did is, instead of like off-centering all three, so it just looked like one big circle blob, I off-centered them by about, you know, like a couple millimeters so that they had this stepped effect. I don't know if this is going to pick up, and I really hope it does. So if, one, if the first layer is here, the second layer peeks out from underneath by a millimeter or two, then the third one peeks out by a millimeter or two. And there's a reason I did it like that. When you spray them, A, it makes it easier to keep them from sticking together um, because then you can easily peel them apart as you're drying them because I used a, you know, a heat gun to dry them in between putting the sprays on because I put a few layers on because it was a light spray um, and it just makes it easier plus it gives it a little bit more of a tattered look when they're stepped Hold on. so it gives it a little bit more of a tattered look and you can kind of rough them up a little bit and actually I didn't have to do much to this because just the process of spraying it and then drying it with the heat gun kind of gave it the tattered look you really didn't have to do much 
but I just like the way it looks when they're offset just by a hair. I think that looks the best. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to do three of those, three of the next biggest, which are these, and you're going to do the exact same th thing. You're going to offset them by a hair. Just give me one. I don't want four or five or six or seven. And you're going to want to, because these flowers have like the petals are all different, you're going to want to line it up the best you can to be um, so that they all kind of match. I mean, you don't have to, I guess. But I'm just trying to get them to all kind of match together. And I just want them to be slightly offset. Like it's easier to put them all perfectly even first, which yeah, this flower is not even the right flower. I think it's upside down. Cause I'm trying to match them up because each of the petals on the, on these are different. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I found it. I had to find it. I had to match the sides. Okay, so it's easier to do it this way and then just kind of wet your fingers a little bit and push them slightly apart so that you have the step down of the three petals. That's just how I found to do it. You might find a different way. Don't know. And then you're going to put those on top, centering them as best you can. Then you're going to go for these suckers these are the next biggest and again you're going to want to line up your petals because of course they're difficult i think they go this way and then you're going to want to Get them lined up and then just move them a little bit. Just a hair, like that. So that they're stepped. Stick them in the middle of the other ones. And then the last ones are the itty bitty ones. Itty bitty bitty. And again, you're going to want to line them up. It's easiest to like dampen your finger. In other words, you know, spit on yourself <laughs> so that you can makes it easier to move the flowers. Okay, so I did the same on this one. And I screwed that one up, hold on. Sometimes it's hard and, and it might be easier too, like I'll show you. It might be easier just to line them all up and not do the stepping until after you put the brad in the center. I did that too. So you could do either or. But once you get them all lined up like this, you're going to take a hole punch. Of course, you're going to need one that can reach into the center, which luckily this one, which is good for bottle caps, or I could use my um, crocodile would work. But I like how small the hole is on this sucker, and I like the, I just like this little punch. This one reaches right in the center. You're going to want to punch a hole, just like that. Easy peasy. Make sure you're holding all three levels or all four levels of the flower so they don't go flying. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a brad that you don't care about, just a cheapy one, and for now, because we're going to replace it. But for now, you just want to put a cheapy brad in the center. You don't want to put like the brad that you want to use on your final flower on right now. Okay, and then you're going to tighten down the brad in the back, like so, and then you've got a pretty flower. Now, you can leave it like this and put your, the, your final brad in the center if you don't want to use a plain one. But there's a reason I did this, because, well, first, I'm going to show you that I can twist the petals while, the, while it's on the brad, so you don't have to do it if you want to get a more, like, have a little more control. You can do all your twisting of the petals to kind of offset them um, once the brad is on. So that's probably an easier way, but I'm just a dumb, dumbass, you know, so I do it the hard way because that's how I roll. 
Um, so once you got this all done, what you're going to do at that point is you are going to spray, which I'm trying to find a scrap piece of paper because you know how prepared I am for things. Do, do, do. What's this? That is not a scrap. Do I not have a single scrap piece of paper? Come on now. Come on now. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to try to avoid spraying my whole desk. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one a different color just because I want a different color. Um, let's see. Let's find a nice color. This is like a bluish kind of color. These are the sprays that I make myself and knock the caps off of. <laughs> Since I already did like a pink color with gold over top, I'm going to do a blue color. Now this does require you to have a heat gun. Well, it doesn't require it. I mean, you could just let it dry, but if you want to get like this kind of tattered, crinkly effect, the heat gun is the best way to go. Let me spray it into my garbage can, make sure it's spraying. It is. Now you're just going to spray your flower, you know, about that much, and then you're going to dry it. Excuse the noise, but I want you to see what I'm doing as I do it. You're going to start off drying it just on the top and before it gets completely dry you're going to pick it up and start drying it from the sides a little bit just so it doesn't stick together and you're just going to go in and kind of dry it from the sides so that the petals separate as you're drying it. Okay, that's like dry already because I make these with alcohol and paint so that they dry quickly. So if you notice um, any petals kind of flipped over, you can push them back. You want to now go through and if you notice any petals sticking together completely, you're just going to go in and stick your hand in there and just kind of unstick them. You don't want them to completely stick together. So just make sure they're not. I mean, you don't have to be crazy about it because the likelihood that they're going to stick together from this is you know the first round no they're probably not okay so then we're gonna do it again I have one rogue petal here that's like decided to say screw you I'm gonna stick up then you're gonna do it again now unless you like this cut this effect if you don't want to do any more you don't have to you could just move on to the next step which I'll show you in a minute but for right now we're just on this step I'm gonna respray them again because I want them a little darker and then we're gonna re dry them once again you're gonna pick it up and dry it from the sides a little bit without dropping it <laughs> What I love is because of the paper, you never know kind of what color is going to come out, but it's got like this green color around the outside kind of, I don't know if you could see it on camera, and it's more blue in the center, which I love. So now when you get the desired color, which sometimes it takes two um, sprays and then dry, spray and then dry, and sometimes it takes three, like the pink one took three. This one I like the kind of the way it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the first layers of petals on one side and I'm just going to like go give it a little spray then I'm going to separate it over here more like this give it a little spray separate and spray and separate and spray and so forth. This is the part that takes probably the longest. Yeah, this is the part that's kind of a pain, only because it's tedious. And you don't have to, like, get every ounce of it. That's not the point. You know, you, you don't want it to be completely perfect. So, ooh, that came out really, really stiff. And then you're going to dry that side before moving on because you don't want it to be take so long where to do the other side where it's going to dry and stick together because at this point it can stick together. 
So you're going to dry it mostly from the side. And you're going to stop and separate any that are like deciding to be rebels and stick together. As I lay the hot heat gun on my lap while it's running, which is probably not smart. My lap is nice and warm. Ow, that's hot. <laughs> And you're just going to, once you get them separated, they pretty much stay separated. And you just dry it from the sides and it kind of fluffs it up at the same time. Just watch your hands because it does get hot. And again, you're not looking for sheer perfection because of course you could still see some of the uh, phone book pages through, which is perfectly fine. So it might take three sides to do this like holding it. Why is it coming out so thick all of a sudden? Well, that's a pain in the butt. Great. Now it's coming out in a stream. Fabulous. I'm clogged. Yay. That needed to happen on camera. That's okay. We make a do. We fix. We fix. We fix. Yeah, so you just want to Peel it. I mean, they're not really, it's not like glue. They're not going to stick. It's just like wet paper. So it is capable of, just don't, you know, rip it. Just be careful not to rip it. And you're not worried about the backside of the petals. You're just worried about the layers. So I'm going to dry it again. And once they're dry, if they're stuck together, you can peel them apart. I'm going to sit here and peel it just to make them, because I want them to be a little fluffy. And it makes it easier if you peel them apart while they're wet still to get them to dry a little bit fluffy, because that gives it that little tattered look. You're going to stop, you're going to pull them apart. It doesn't take long at all. Once you get a couple going, you know, at the same time, it's really easy because you could do like several at a time. And as you do one and let it dry or set it aside, you could do another one. Yours won't take as long to dry because this is coming out for some reason like a stream and it's like really wetting it. So that's why they're taking so long. Now I forget where I was working. Okay, over here. So now we're going to go back over and spray under here on this side. And like I said, you don't need to make them perfect. They just need to be somewhat colored, like that, and then we'll spray. Wait a minute, missed a leaf. This is saturated. Again, separate petals. I hope you're able to see this and I'm not like completely off camera. You just want to go through and separate them because, not because they're going to stick together necessarily, um, because they're really not. Paint's not really sticky um, and it's a paint spray too, it's not like solid paint just because I want them to get fluffy as they dry. So in order for that to happen, we need the air getting between each petal. It makes it easier. Ooh, get back here.
And if you don't like holding it while it's drying, like if the heat bothers your hands, take a paintbrush and just hold it. And you could do the same thing. And now, if you can't see this, some steam is going to come off. I want that to happen because that's what makes the papers kind of get that crispy kind of feel. And I kind of like that. So if you feel like if you see some steam coming off, let that happen without, of course, lighting your fi your flower on fire. But yeah, let it steam up a little bit because it, it, it almost cooks it so that it, the papers get nice and crisp. And I kind of like that. You don't have to do that, but I like it. like I lost a petal. That's okay. I was too rough. That's all right. You've got like a million of them. So if you get one of the little ones fall off, because when paper is wet, it's, you know, a lot more fragile. Um, the same goes for your hair. The wetter your hair is, which is why you should never brush wet hair. Ever, ever don't brush wet hair. I went to school for cosmetology, by the way. You should always use a wide tooth comb or a pick is the worst, is the worst, is the best thing to use. I use a pick on my hair. It's the best thing to use on wet hair. No brushes. See that steam? Woohoo! And then I just go through and I'm just kind of doing it like this to give it a little shape and a little dimension. Because you're basically going to cook the flour to get it to shape how you want it. And I didn't do this as much with the first one. I'm doing it more with this one to see what kind of shape I can get out of it. Wow, that really looks cool. Love it! Awesome! Look at that. So wicked cool! I love it! This one came out better than the first one, which I'm glad it did on camera, geez. And then if any of them are, go rogue on you and they're just like poking up the opposite direction, just turn around and fold them and then you can heat dry them to set them back down too. So isn't that cool? Look at that. How cool is that out of a phone book for crying out loud? A phone book flower. That's what I'm going to call these. Phone book flowers. I have not found them on eBay or eBay. Why do I always say eBay? What am I addicted to eBay? I'm like an eBay addict or something. YouTube. I have not found them on YouTube. I've found other things with phone books. I even, I think I found roses, but that might have been newspaper. But anyway, um, it could have been phone book. But I've never seen flowers like this, and I looked. So I may or may not be the first person to make these kind of flowers. Isn't that special? I don't care. Um, I just wanted to do something fun with the phone book. Um, but cool. Isn't this cool? I think it came out great. Now you can choose from here how you want to do it. If you want to sparkle it with some like of this uh, color shine by Heidi Swap, or you want to use your like glimmer mists, which I have some, but I, that's what I'd like to do is just put an ounce of sparkle, but I'll probably do that off camera. Or you can put stickles on the edges. You can do all kinds of things. When you're done doing whatever you're going to do, that's when you can replace the brad. Now the flower is stiffer. It's not going to like just fall apart. And besides, you're going to hold it anyway. So let's see if I can find a brad. If I can't find one in a few minutes, then I'm just going to give up. And I'll do it off camera because I know I've got things. I don't know if that bright yellow one. Eh. That one's a nicer yellow. That one's okay. It's not. Ooh, look at that. 
I don't know if I want to use that on there per se. I don't have that many brads. I should have more, I feel like. I need more brad. Oh, wait, I do have some more over here. Hold the phone. Yeah. They're little, though. Wait, what's this one? Eh, I do like this one. Or is that too much? Yeah, that's kind of too much for that. And this one doesn't have, isn't, like, doesn't have the thing on the back. So, maybe I'll do this off camera because I'm sure you know how to replace a brad. But I'll find something for it. So, you just take the brad out. You hold it like you did before. You hold it like this so you have all four of the flowers together. You take the brad out. You put a new one in. Easy squeezy. There's nothing to it. But isn't that cool? It has sort of a crunchy feel to it, which I love. And it looks like a vintage flower almost. Because you could see the writing through it. And it just looks cool. Can't beat it. So anyway, go out. Grab your old phone books. Don't throw them away from now on. Because I think I crushed them. Oh, there it is. I was excited. Did I crushed my other flower. Um, don't throw out your old phone books. Make some flowers. Get the kids involved. Seriously. Have some fun with this stuff. You can make all kinds of things with your phone books. So don't, don't just throw them in the garbage. Don't waste the paper. You can also use them for journals, which I'm going to show. Because as I'm cutting out pages of this, um, of this one. But I have a smaller one, which I can't reach right now. That's about, you know, two-thirds the size of this one. That I'm going to make into a journal. So, how cool is that? So, keep watching for more fun videos with phone books and phone book paper. Because I'm going to figure out a whole bunch of fun stuff to do. So, I hope you liked my video. Have a great rest of your day. Make sure you do what you love. Love what you do. Make some flowers. Be nice to people. And have a great day. Love you guys. Bye.